Hello everyone, welcome back. We are done dealing with the mathematical background that are required for the subject cryptography and network security. Now we are stepping into a new chapter, block ciphers. In order to understand this chapter, we need to know the differences between stream cipher and block cipher. And that's why we are here today. The topic of today's lecture is stream cipher versus block cipher. Let's dive into the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, understand the differences between confusion and diffusion properties and outcome number two, understand the differences between stream cipher and block cipher. Before seeing the differences between stream cipher and block cipher, we should understand clearly what are the differences between these two atomic operations, the confusion and diffusion. Let's see that first. So we are going to clearly understand what is confusion and what is diffusion. Firstly, we will focus on confusion. This confusion is actually making the relationship between the encryption key and the ciphertext as complex as possible. We know very well any encryption algorithm is going to take two inputs and it's going to generate one output. The inputs are the plain text and the key. Now this encryption algorithm takes the plain text and the key and it processes this input and produces the output which is the cipher text. In simple terms, the plain text is given to the cipher or the encryption algorithm and this cipher or encryption algorithm is going to generate the cipher text. Suppose we are given with the cipher text, there should be no traces about the plain text. So this is exactly confusion. That is, the relationship between the cipher text and the plain text is obscured. If the relationship between the plain text and the cipher text is hidden, obviously even if you are given with a cipher text, you cannot guess what is the plain text. So that is the property of confusion. Say if we are given with a cipher text, obviously there will be no information or no details that can be guessed about the plain text, the key, what encryption algorithm that the sender has used in order to generate the cipher text. And if all details are hidden, then we can say there exists confusion property. In chapter 1, we have seen the classical encryption technique which has substitution technique and transposition technique. This substitution technique is an example that contains the confusion property. So we are done with confusion. Let's move on to diffusion. What is this diffusion? In confusion, there is no relationship between the cipher text and the plain text. Whereas in diffusion, see, this diffusion is the process of making each plain text bit affect as many cipher text bits as possible. Suppose you are giving some plain text to the cipher or the encryption algorithm and this encryption algorithm is generating the cipher text which is the output. If you make a small modification in the plain text and if the output or the cipher text is changed drastically, then there is diffusion property. That is, if there is one bit change in the plain text and if there exists a significant effect on the cipher text, then this is exactly the diffusion property. In the classical encryption technique, the substitution technique is coming under confusion and the transposition or permutation is coming under diffusion. Which one is actually required for a strong encryption scheme? Whether confusion or diffusion? It needs both confusion and diffusion. These two terms, confusion and diffusion, are introduced by Claude Shannon whose efforts cannot be denied in this contemporary communication world, which is this digital world. We are done with the confusion and diffusion properties. Before understanding the difference between stream cipher and block cipher, let's see what is a stream cipher. Each plain text digit is encrypted one at a time with the corresponding digit of the key stream to give a digit of the cipher text stream. That is, the encryption is done one by one. That is what stream cipher is all about. Let's see a diagram, then it will be clear for you. See, in this case, we can see that this is the encryption algorithm, this is the plain text and this is the key. Now, this plain text is given either bit by bit or byte by byte. So, if the input is taken as bit by bit or byte by byte, then it is stream cipher. If the input is taken as bit by bit and obviously the output is also generated as bit by bit, if the encryption algorithm is going to take the input as bit by bit or byte by byte, then it is stream cipher. We are done with stream cipher. Let's see what is block cipher. In block cipher, it is a deterministic algorithm that is operating on fixed length groups of bits, which we call as blocks. 
In simple terms, stream cipher operates bit by bit. Block cipher operates block by block. What is this block? This block is going to be a fixed length group of bits. Say 64 bits or 128 bits constitute a block. The size of the block is decided by the encryption algorithm. So it's clear that when we have an encryption algorithm, and obviously it's going to take two inputs, one is the playing text and the other one is the key. If the playing text that is given to this encryption algorithm is a group of bits, say 64 bits in one block, then this approach is called as block cipher. Say in this case, we have three blocks of input. Each block is of fixed length size 64 bits each and the output is also going to be 64 bits each. So it's clear that a block cipher takes a block of bits. The block of bits is going to be the fixed length block. The size of the block is decided by the encryption algorithm. So this is what the basic introduction about stream cipher and block cipher. Let's see the differences between stream cipher and block cipher. So in what aspects we are going to differentiate stream cipher and block cipher? We have so many parameters, say in terms of length, design, principle, speed, the encryption process, the decryption process and with some examples, we are going to differentiate stream cipher and block cipher. Let's start with the first parameter, the length. So in stream cipher, we know the length of the input size is going to be either a bit or a byte. A byte means it's of 8 bits. Say if the encryption algorithm is going to take bit by bit input or byte by byte input, then it is going to be stream ciphers. Whereas in block ciphers, the encryption algorithm is going to take a block of input. This block can be 64 bits or 128 bits. This is actually depending on the algorithm that is used. Now coming to the design of the stream cipher, it's going to use a complex design because it's going to take an input bit and it's going to generate an output bit. So the operation is going to be complex here. Whereas in the block cipher, we will have a design. We are going to follow the design in order to generate the cipher text. This point will be not clear for you at this moment. When we see DES, the data encryption standard and AES, the advanced encryption standard, then it will be easy for you to understand. Then what is the principle that is used in stream cipher? The principle that is used by stream cipher is confusion principle only. Whereas block cipher uses both confusion and diffusion. And coming to the speed, which one will be faster? Generally, stream ciphers are faster than block ciphers. Now you may be wondering, how it is so? Because stream ciphers are going to be taking bit by bit input. Whereas a block cipher is going to take a group of bits, right? But generally, stream ciphers are faster than block ciphers. In order to know how it is, don't miss to watch this complete lecture series. Once you are done, then you will be able to understand why stream ciphers are generally faster than block ciphers. And coming to the encryption method that is used by stream cipher, generally it is CFB or OFB. CFB means the cipher feedback mode, OFB means the output feedback mode, whereas the block cipher uses ECB that is the electronic code book or CBC the cipher block chaining. I know it will be very difficult to understand the modes of operation now. No worries, just take it as an example. In this chapter, we are going to see the modes of operations elaborately at that time, this point will be clear for you. So keep the fingers crossed in order to understand the explanation for this point as well. Now coming to the decryption, we know the decryption is the exact opposite of encryption. So in stream ciphers, generally XOR operation is preferred. So the reverse operation is doing the XOR again. So the decryption is simply an XOR operation here. Whereas in block cipher, the reverse of the encryption. And finally, an example stream cipher, the Vernum cipher. Whereas the example block cipher is DES, D -E -S, the data encryption standard, the advanced encryption standard are some examples of block cipher. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the differences between the important two aspects of cryptographic algorithm, the diffusion property and the confusion property. We also have understood what is stream cipher and block cipher. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.